Hi guys, it's Katie. I am getting ready to do my food prep for the week, so I thought I would bring you along. I have my to-do list here. I have um, veggie prep for bibimbap to do. I'm going to make hamburger buns. I'm going to make hamburger patties and meatballs with a bunch of ground beef that I got. I'm going to make a mustard sauce that's going to go on some baked chicken. And the first thing I'm going to do is make some rice pudding. So I was trying to be helpful, and I went ahead and cooked extra rice for... Um, another meal, but I cooked it completely wrong. Like when I changed the proportions to make extra rice, I screwed up the water proportion. So this is like pretty sticky and over, well not overcooked, but it's still pretty like sticky and tacky. So I'm going to make rice pudding with this. This is something my mom used to make all the time and I don't really make it that often. Um, for the longest time I didn't think I could make it without milk, but now I just pretty much any recipe that calls for dairy, I use almond milk. And I've never really had anything turn out terrible. So I'm going to follow this recipe. I found this a long, long time ago on all recipes. I tried to find it again, and I couldn't find it. So I will just uh, tell you, but it's it's like, you know, basically any um, baked custard style rice pudding. Just substitute almond milk, and you'll get it. So three eggs, three cups of milk, half a cup of sugar, two cups of cooked rice, and then um, you can put nutmeg or cinnamon, and you can also add raisins. So my mom always added raisins, and I loved it. So I'm going to see how much rice is here, and I might just kind of make it work. Because I have, I think I have more rice than a recipe, but I think I have less almond milk than the recipe. Um, so oh, we'll see. We'll see how this turns out. I'm just going to mix it in this big measuring cup, and then I'll pour it into a baking dish. Okay, so I have about two and a half cups of milk. Children are going crazy upstairs. They're supposed to both be having quiet time. I, mean, I guess at least it's happy screaming. It's not like crying screaming. <laughs> Put, I'll start with three eggs. I might add a fourth egg since I have a little bit of extra rice here. Actually, I have no idea how much rice I have. that up. Alright, so I put half a cup of sugar in. I think I wasn't rolling. And I'm going to put some vanilla, even though the recipe doesn't call for it. I think it needs it, so probably about a teaspoon. Some homemade vanilla. Smells really good. Love that homemade vanilla. So, now We'll see how much rice I have here. And I spread it out on this dish trying to maybe dry it out a little bit. But no, it's very, very sticky. So I'm going to try to kind of crumble it in here. I think that will be good. doesn't look like it'll be too uh, thick with the extra rice. Just trying to kind of break up any super big clumps. Okay, I'm going to add a little nutmeg. Nutmeg is definitely what my mom put instead of cinnamon. So I'm going to do a little bit of nutmeg. I'm just going to put a couple cranks of salt. So, hopefully that turns out okay. Alright, so I'm going to grease up this baking dish with some coconut oil. And then I'm going to bake this in a water bath. Alright, so I'll go ahead and pour this in the baking dish. in another baking dish in the oven. Just like that. I'm going to spread out. The rice seems to be in a big pile in the middle. So. Pour some water in here. This is hot water into a hot pan. You don't want to put cold water into a hot pan. Just slide that in carefully. 
and it's gonna bake for about an hour and halfway through I'm gonna stir it. I'm gonna set a timer for 30 minutes and then we'll check on it. Okay, now I'm ready to do the prep for the bibimbap. Um, so all of these vegetables I have here, I'm just going to do cut up into matchsticks. So I need to prep all these veggies for the bibimbap. And I'm just going to cut them all into like strips or small pieces and put them on this um, tray. And then tomorrow when we have this meal, they'll be ready. I can just do like a quick, you do just a quick um, stir fry on them. So what I'm going to do is just cut these into matchsticks. All the veggies that are going to be stir fried for the bibimbap. I'm just going to cover this up with plastic and put it in the fridge for now. Okay, so these little um, scraps, I'm not going to waste them. I will probably just munch on them as a snack or I'll chop them up and either put them in the pasta sauce or something. I don't think they'll make it uh, to the end of the week for the frittata since they are cut, but we'll find some use for them. Next, I'm just going to dice up a whole bunch of scallions because they're in um, a couple of those stir-fried vegetables and also you can just put them on top of the vegan bop. Um, so these are actually the scallions from last week and a lot of them are still really good. There's just some like dried out leaves. So I'll try to use as much of this as I can. Ended up getting a lot more than I needed last week. I bought them first at Beach Mart, and then I saw that they were a lot nicer at Aldi. So I ended up buying them at both stores because I didn't know that when I bought them at Beach Mart. And then here I am with all these extras. So I'll try not to waste too much. the shiitake mushrooms. What I'm gonna do, let me get my strainer out. Twinsies! I'm gonna just take the cap and then these I will save, I will clean them up and then I will probably put them in the freezer for now but you can put them in um, when you're making stock. And you can buy shiitakes dried and I think Meng Chi's original recipe, she reconstituted dried shiitakes, but the ones that I've seen have sulfites on them, and I would rather avoid preservatives like that, so I'm pretty lucky I guess they have these. That one doesn't look great. They have these fresh ones at H Mart. Um, you could also just use any kind of mushrooms, probably. Even, um, I almost got some enoki mushrooms, but they didn't look great either. So. Enoki mushrooms are one of my favorite mushrooms. Um, probably the first 33 years of my life I had only ever had like white mushrooms and portobello mushrooms. And then I started trying different kinds of mushrooms and they are so good. So, I'm going to these in 
under some cool water. And generally you're not supposed to wash mushrooms, but these are going to get marinated anyway, so they're going to be absorbing a bunch of liquid, so I don't care. Squeeze those out. Okay, so let's look and see how the rice pudding is looking. It smells good. It smells like vanilla and nutmeg, so you can't go wrong with that. And I'm not even going to pull it out because I had a hard time getting it back in. Yeah, it's starting to thicken up. Oh, yum. It smells so good. It smells just like I remember having it when I was a kid. Okay. We'll set another 30 minutes. And then I will just slice these up. soy sauce and some sesame oil and just a little bit of honey it's like a teaspoon of honey and I'll stir that up and this is what I'll marinate the mushrooms in and I'll just do it right in this storage container and they can sit in this until we're ready to cook this tomorrow. So throw these all in. Toss it around. Oh, that sesame oil smells really good. And this will be ready to throw into a pan and stir fry to put on top of the bibimbap. Ready to go. And then here, I'm just going to cut off the part where I can't get the, the dirt off on these stems. I'm going to use this plastic. It says, oops, there you go, just have your mushrooms right on there. So I will remember what these are. And I'm not worried about wrapping them too tightly because, like I said, they're just going to go into stock. Right, i got to take a minute and clean up my sink a little bit and I'll be right back. Alright, so I just have a few more things to do for the bibimbap. I'm going to blanch the spinach, and I'm also going to blanch the soybean sprouts. So, um, rather than make two pots dirty, I'm going to do one pot and just do it in batches. Okay, I just need to get the lid. Let that get hot. Um, and then the last thing is to make the sauce. So let me go ahead and work on that. Okay, so normally I just kind of eyeball this. But I am going to measure this out just so that I can um, put it in my macro tracker. I'm just keeping track of the things that I eat uh, to try to help keep me on track as far as, uh, you know, So this is gochujang, it's fermented hot chili paste, it's like a staple Korean ingredient. So about 160 grams of uh, gochujang and then like a teaspoon, yeah, probably about 6 grams, about a teaspoon of sugar, and then I'm going to put some sesame oil. Maybe 
like two tablespoons, which is about 30 grams. And I'm just going to mix this up. Go ahead and throw in. Throw in the bean sprouts. And let those blanch. They need to cook for, I think it's like 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Timer has gone off for the rice pudding. And I don't know if it's done or not. I'm going to let it go a little bit longer. Okay, up next I'm going to do the meatballs and the meat uh, hamburger patties. So I'm just going to put salt and pepper. And maybe a little garlic powder. And I'm going to take the hamburgers out. And then with the rest I'll make meatballs. Oops. I'll use salt and pepper and garlic in the meatballs as well. And then I'll just add more. Does that make sense to anybody but me? Sometimes when you're in your kitchen all alone talking to a camera, you don't know what you're saying. Alright, so a little bit of garlic powder. Make sure you put plenty of salt since this is four pounds of meat. Sometimes it's deceiving when you do big batches that you really have to remember they're making big batches, so you need lots of seasoning. I'm going to go ahead and mix this. So I have my scale set up here so I can do. When I make my hamburgers, I press them out, but I also use my thumb to press the edge in so that the edges aren't super tapered and overcook. They're all the same thickness all the way through. Like and if you find that your hamburgers are kind of like crawling up and being really round in the center, you can put it like a dimple in the center before you grill them. Okay, so these are measured out hamburgers, and then for my children, we're not keeping track of how much they eat, so I'll just make a couple smaller ones for them. Those are our hamburgers. I think the bean sprouts are done, so let me strain those. Okay, I'll get the pot back on so that I can blanch the spinach. In this container. While my hands are clean, woo, you coming? I am gonna wrap these up. We're gonna have these on Tuesday night, so the day after tomorrow. So I'll just put these in the fridge. If it was any longer than that, I would put them in the freezer. But I'm okay with them being in the fridge until Tuesday. So to the rest of this meat, I'm going to add two eggs. Okay, 
also going to add probably a cup of breadcrumbs. Dry parsley, dry basil. Wish I had some dry oregano and some fennel seeds. This is like my mom's secret ingredient, fennel seeds. Delicious in meatballs. Before I stick my hand in there and get all yucky all over again, I'm gonna do the blanch on the spinach. Container. Now, I think we have everything for the bebop, bibimbap done. Yeah, I've forgotten about the rice pudding twice, so let me pull that out before I get started doing anything else. Like that. Just a little bit of cinnamon. I'm a little disorganized today. I didn't start with the bread, which I should have. So now I think I'm gonna have to put that off till tomorrow. Go ahead and get this mixed up. So it's just egg and breadcrumbs, and then the seasonings. I put the garlic and the salt and pepper in already. And just mix it up with your hands. Sometimes I put a little tomato paste in. I don't have any right now, but I would if I had it. That gives them a really rich flavor. If you can have dairy, putting Parmesan cheese in your meatball, like as you're mixing it up, oh, so good. When I was a kid, my mom would make meatballs. She would hide raisins inside the center, which sounds like the weirdest thing. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I think my husband would have a cow if I tried to do that. My husband's not super fond of raisins as it is. And if I hid them in something like a meatball, yeah, I can just imagine him biting into a meatball and finding raisins in all places, you know. He doesn't even like raisins in cookies or something like that. So I don't do it that way, but it's kind of fun. It's, um, you know, the whole sweet, savory sort of combination that's really good okay so that's mixed up well let me grab my cookie scoop okay so just scoop these out something i kind of learned the hard way about these kind of cookie scoops maybe it's just the, this one might be a little sharp but i used to just drag them up the side of the bowl like this and i found that a lot of my mixing bowls were getting scratched and even like my kitchen aid um, my stand mixers bowl so I don't do that anymore. I either do it against my hand like this, or I do it like against a spatula or something. I'd rather scratch up a $2 spatula than my mixing bowls. So anyway, maybe it looks a little awkward the way I'm doing it, but that's why I'm doing it this way. Okay, so these are ready to go in the oven. And just let those bake for like 45 minutes. And I think the last thing I'm going to do is mix up the mustard sauce. I'll have to do the hamburger buns tomorrow. I have a whole video and I've shown it plenty of times on the food prep. So if I don't get a chance to film it, then I will link to the recipe down below. So I will link the recipe for this mustard sauce. I just eyeball it these days, but this is a really good sauce. You can um, put it on 
like chicken. Oh my gosh. Honey, can you open this for me? Yes. You can put it on chicken and bake it, or you can put it on chicken and grill it. Or you can even, like I do a lot of, thank you. I do a lot of grilled potatoes in the summertime, and it's really good just brushed over the um, potatoes while they're grilling too. It's like halvesies, halvesies of yellow mustard and Dijon mustard. And then a couple tablespoons of honey. And just a splash of apple cider vinegar. And a little bit of sriracha. I don't go crazy with the sriracha since I'm feeding children, but you can put in as much as you want. And th this tastes like a really good version of the spicy mustard that they serve at McDonald's, or at least they did last time I went to McDonald's that they serve with the chicken nuggets. That's like my favorite thing at McDonald's. <laughs> um, but this is what this tastes like. It is super delicious and as you can see like all these ingredients you can just keep on hand and whip it up pretty quickly. But that is what it looks like. Alright, I'm going to get this in a little container. So I'm going to make sure I get all the honey up. And yeah, we'll just pour it in here. So that is ready for the refrigerator. Alright, that's going to do it for this week's meal prep. I will show you some clips of the meatballs when they come out. I'm going to take that big batch, divide it in half. I'm going to put both halves in the freezer just because we're not having them until a little bit later in the week. And then I'll pull one, you know, one half of the big batch out for um, this week and then the others will just stay in the freezer for another meal on another time um, and again with the bread if you want to see how to make that I have a recipe a whole video showing how to make that and it's a great recipe it's one of the first bread recipes that I was getting very consistent results every time I made it so it's like one of my very good um, beginners recipes I get a lot of great comments on that video that people try it and they love it so if you're looking for an easy um, bread roll recipe you don't have to make them into hamburger buns i make them into hamburger buns hot dog buns and sometimes i just make small like dinner rolls so anyway you can use them for sandwiches you can use them for whatever you want just depends on what shape you make so anyway that's gonna do it for the food prep i hope you enjoyed it i'd love to have you subscribe i would love to have you thumbs up the video and i would love to have you subscribe so click click everything down below you know what to do links in the description i will see you guys next time thanks for watching bye hey that's what the rice pudding looks like it's really good. It's just a lot of rice, so either cut back on the rice or make more of the custardy stuff. Super delicious.